Hi, today we're going to learn about the shell method. Let's say we have a problem like this. Calculate the volume of the solid created when f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 5e to the x minus 4 over x is rotated around the y-axis from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So before we even get started, let's first go over what the shell method is. So, we already know that we have to use the disk or washer method when we're rotating around the x-axis. But what about when we're rotating around the y-axis? That's when we have to use something called the shell method. So what is a shell method? First, let's figure out the formula before we start, figuring, before we start solving this problem. So what do we do? So essentially what we have to do is we have to create cylinders like these and then calculate the surface areas of these cylinders and add them up. So how does this work? So let's say we make this cylinder over here. Now if we make this cylinder like this on a 3D graph it would end up looking like this. The next cylinder would end up, like this cylinder here, would end up looking like this. And that cylinder would end up looking like that. So before this becomes a jumbled mess, let's look at what it means. So if we have an infinite number of these cylinders, so actually, before we even get there, when we take these cylinders, what we're actually trying to look for is for, like the, is for the lateral surface area of the cylinders. So what does that mean? The lateral surface area is basically this surface area of the cylinders. So, if we have the lateral surface areas for an infinite number of cylinders that fit in this shape here, then we're going to get the volume of the cone. So now that we know what to do, let's figure out how to do it. So what we want to do is we want to create an infinite number of cylinders underneath this shape here. And we want to calculate their surface areas, like the surface areas that run up and down, and then we want to add them together. So how do we do this? Well, let's look at this uh, formula for the surface area, for the lateral surface area of a cylinder. So, the surface area of just that part that goes up and down is equal to 2 pi r, which is the circumference of the base times the height. So this gives us the lateral surface area. So now let's take this and put it in forms of this. So what is the radius of the cylinders that we're making? Well that's simple, it's x. So this distance here would be x at this point, this distance here is x, and this distance here is also x. So the radius of the cylinder is always going to be x, the x value of each point. So r is equal to x. Now what's the height? Well here the height for this cylinder is going to be like this. The height for this cylinder is that and the height for this cylinder is that. So what is that? Well that's f of x or the y value. So if we take an individual point, let's say for the cylinder that we make when we get here, we have the values x and f of x. Now, for this cylinder, which has one like edge touching this point, for the cylinder that's made with that edge over there, the radius of that cylinder is going to be x, and its height is going to be f of x. Alright, so now that we've found out how to find the surface areas, there's one more thing we have to do. We know that we want to have an infinite number of cylinders, so that means that each cylinder has to have a thickness of dr, or sorry, dx. So that's an infinitesimally small thickness. So the thickness of each cylinder is dx. And so when we have a thickness of dx, then we can calculate the integral to get an infinite number of these cylinders. So let's put this into one formula. We want to find, so we want to have each cylinder. So the surface area, we want to have the surface area of each cylinder. So the surface area of each cylinder is 2 pi Sorry. It's 2 pi x times f of x. Now, we want these cylinders to be infinitesimally small, which means we multiply them by dx, an infinitesimally small number. 
And because we want to have an infinite number of these cylinders, or a really, 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 really large number of these cylinders, we're going to calculate the integral. Now, we know that we can't calculate the volume of something that goes on forever, so we need to have upper and lower bounds. So what does that mean? In this case, because the function is in terms of only x, our bounds are going to be also in terms of x. So they're going to range from, in this example up here, from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 1. So basically they range from a to b, where a and b are constants. So this is how we get to this formula over here. So take a moment to write this in your notes before we erase it. So the formula that we're going to be using is this formula over here, which basically says that the volume is equal to the integral from a to b of 2 pi x times f of x dx, which is equal to 2 pi times the integral from a to b of x times f of x dx. So, now let's solve the problem. The problem is asking us to calculate the volume of the solid created when this function over here is rotated around the y-axis from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So let's just plug this into the formula first. So we're going to get that the volume, let's just say v, is equal to the integral from 0 to 1, because those are our bounds on the x, those are our bounds on the x. Sorry, volume is equal to 2 pi times this integral from 0 to 1 of x times f of x, which is 3x squared plus 5e to the x minus 4 over x dx. So let's just take a look at this integral here. It'll expand to be the integral from 0 to 1 of 3 times x to the third plus 5e to the x times x minus 4 dx. So basically from here you can plug this into the calculator and then multiply it with 2 pi. So we're going to get volume is equal to 2 pi times this. So take a moment to plug it into your calculator and see what you can get. So when I plug this into my calculator, I get the volume is equal to 14 pi over 4, which is around 10.5. Now, if you were doing this manually, what you would do is you would split this up into three different integrals. The first one you would do normally with the inverse of the power rule. The last one you would also do the same way. In the middle one, you would use integration by parts. So this is the answer. Today we learned about the shell method. Thanks for watching this video.